Hello world, it's Randy Shabs 50 here, and I'm going to give a quick overview on my AR pistol. Um, it's a custom build that I had built. Uh, it's a beautiful gun. I loved it when I was building it, and I'm actually very, not very surprised. I really enjoy it, and I knew that I was going to perform well. I'm just happy with it now, and I'm so confident with it that I've now made it one of my bedside weapons. So, upper and lower, made by Aero Precision. Um, the trigger is made by Anderson. The bolt carrier group was made by Anderson. Uh, it's a, it has a 1.7 twist barrel. Ooh, beautiful, huh? If you can look at the front, you see this contraption here. No, it's not a compensator. No, it's not a silencer. It's basically like a faux silencer. Just there, basically, co cosmetically. It doesn't do anything function-wise for the weapon. It just makes it look good. It's a Black Moose 50-50 can. So Black Moose is the company. You can take a look at it if you're interested in putting it in one of your rifles. Um, slide down here to the barrel. You can see that I have this little handguard. It looks pretty short, right? Yeah, because it has a seven and a half inch barrel here on this this pistol. Slide up here. Have just normal backup sights to help out with my Romeo Five my Six Sour Red Dot, which I love to death. I have AFG here, angle four grip. Turn to the side here. I'm left handed, so I'm kind of holding it a little bit different than most people. I have an Enforce. Flashlight on it, weapon mounted light, have my OD green one point sling, a Magpul rubberized grip here. I love the rubber feel, it's something about it makes me love it. Ergo rubber Magwell grip, let me try to get it focused. And if I'm in this shooting moment holding like this, this feels good on my hand. I just love that rubberized feel. Um, Aerodexter safety switch. Amber Dexter's charging handle. I won't charge it because I do have a magazine in it that's loaded. The rounds in there are a Hornady American Gunner um, hollow points, uh, 55 grain rounds. I know some people talk about ballistics, but I'll get to that point. Gun is now unloaded. There's nothing in the chamber. Beautiful gun. Normal stabilizing brace. Nothing spectacular there. Let's give a quick, quick look at it. So some may ask, why did I choose this weapon uh, to be my first AR build? Why did I choose it in 5.56 opposed to 300 Blackout or any other caliber that may seem better for what I'm going to intend to use it for? And my answer to that question is because I wanted to, right? We're in America, I have the choice to do so, so why not do it? I chose 556 5, opposed to 300 blackouts because I have all of my all of my ammo, well not all of my ammo, but all of my rifle rounds for the AR-15 platform type rifle pistol are 556 5, or 223. So I wanted to keep that theme. Now one day I will choose 300 blackout and I will build a 300 blackout um, chambered rifle, but for right now, um, this AR pistol chamber in 5.56 five, is what I wanted and what I think I needed for my bedside pistol or rifle. When I say pistol, but it's a rifle uh, cartridge in this pistol. So some people say and some people know it's, it's been tested ballistically that the 300 blackout round is probably one of the better rounds to put in your weapon with a short, a shorter, a shorter type barrel um, if you're trying to keep that round having a, a top flight type of velocity. Some people mentioned that 556 five, loses its velocity when you shorten the barrel and that it's not gonna be uh, one of the most best choices to use when you're trying to defend your life. And I can see that for to an extent, but if you are using this for a home defense rifle or just some type of rifle where you are going to defend yourself in some type of close encounter combat, five, five, six rounds to do just enough in a seven and a half inch or 10 inch or 10 and a half inch, whatever, I can't remember which one. Is it 10 inch or 10 and a half inch when you go up to 10? I don't know. I have seven and a half, so that's what I focus on. Uh, they say that the velocity is gonna get so much lower that you aren't gonna get as much penetration as you really want to get. And my rebuttal to that is if I'm going to defend myself within 10, 15 yards, I believe that the velocity is going to be good enough still to um, make deep enough penetration to stop that threat and neutralize that threat if I'm trying to save my life or my family members' lives. Now, if I was going to be out here uh, trying to shoot 
50 yards, 100 yards, okay, maybe this is not the best choice for me. But within my home, or I don't keep it in my car, but within my car where something is probably going to be up close, this is going to be just enough of good enough tool for you to use. And that's my opinion on it. I think it's still, that five, five, six round hollow point is still going to do a good enough damage right there to stop that threat within your home. That's why I use it in my bedside. Let's talk about reliability. Um, what I did notice when I had this rifle built, or when I built, built this rifle, was that the first few rounds of these hollow points didn't go through as, as smooth as I anticipated them to. It was weird. I had a couple of jams with it. So I took them out, you know, loaded the magazine that had the normal full metal jackets in it, boom, ran straight through. Put the hollow points back in, boom, ran straight through. So to me, I just thought that it was some type of like breaking in period for the brand new guns. It's the first, it, it was shot like five times when I was testing it out and zeroing in the red dot, but with, with uh, normal rounds. But I figured that with those hollow point rounds, with those different type of rounds, it may need to be broken in a little bit. So I've been to the range probably three or four times since then, and the hollow point rounds go straight through it. It's perfect. So some people say, why are you gonna use hollow point rounds? Why are you gonna shoot all those at the range? You know, you, you, you're wasting money. Yes, you can say that, but I'm not gonna put a, a round in my gun if I haven't tested it out and proved that it, it is reliable and works. Then I'm glad that I tested it out because that first one or two rounds did not function properly. So I'm glad I continue to test it and continue to see what's on, going on with it. And I just chucked it up to, okay, I need to kind of get some rounds through the gun to get it kind of broken loose a little bit. And now I've had no problems with the with the round. So all the rounds I've shot through it have been successful after those first two. And now I'm, I'm very confident in those hollow point rounds that I keep in the gun. So they are, what I said, Hornady, uh, American Gunner, 55 grain hollow point rounds that I keep, brass rounds that I keep in this weapon. Some people do 62 grains. Yes, it's great, but I just, just happen to choose the 55. I think you can choose what you want. The heavier 62 grain can be better for certain things. I think it'd be uh, highly capable for what I want to use it to, what I want to use it for, but I just happen to choose the 55 grain. So, like I said, I keep this as one of my bedside weapons, right along with the ballistic vest, right along with the handguns, just in case things get very hairy. And also, my spouse, my wife is very, very... Uh, it's very sexy, actually. She's very, very uh, well-rounded in firearms, as well as handguns, rifles, or anything. So I can pass this to her, and I'm, I'm confident that she can do well with this. And I go in uh, the closet in the bedroom and grab the actual full-size rifle if things got really, really hairy, and throw on the vest, and we can go at it that way. So this is my uh, Aero Precision AR pistol build. I love it to death. Overall, it's probably cost probably right around five or something like that, counting the red dot and all of that. You can go to Palmetto State Armory and they have very good deals on parts if you wanna build your own pistol or build your own rifle, whatever you wanna do, they have plenty of good deals and good sales on parts that you can build your, uh, your rifle of your dreams uh, and buy different attachments and different accessories for it. There are many other sites that are uh, semi-comparable, but I found that Palmetto State Armory has some of the best deals that I've, I've ever seen. So this is my AR pistol build. I love her to death. <laughs> At first, initially, I hated how how far it came back. I didn't really like that it was so short and up on me so far, but I got used to it and I actually fell in love with it. And at first I put it in my safe. I said, I'm not, I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna continue to use my rifle. I'm, I, I, don't really, I don't really like it as much as I thought I would like it. But I started shooting it, manipulating it, going around corners in my home, checking my security points in my home, and I started falling in love with it. So if you are thinking about a, uh, building an AR pistol, I say go for it. But go to the ATF websites, go do some more research and find out the do's and don'ts of building an AR pistol at home or buying an AR pistol in general and making sure you aren't violating some type of federal or state laws with whatever kind of attachments like a vertical grip or uh, collapsible stock or something like that. Make sure you aren't going into that realm and you're making like a short barrel rifle when you're really trying to make a an AR pistol and you don't have a tax stamp for whatever you need or or whatever kind of process that is. I don't I don't go through all of that. I haven't uh, tried to get any kind of silencers or anything to even go through that process. But I've kind of studied up on it. But I'm not a professional on it, so I'm not going to go into that because I don't know the ins and outs of the whole SBR type of, of detail. So to kind of go bypass that, what do people usually do? They'll, they'll build an AR pistol 
and, you know, have no type of uh, attachment here or do some type of angled forward grip or some kind of uh, hand stop or something like that to try to stay out of that um, SBR type realm or, or keep a brace on it and not have a brace to stay out of that realm or, or something like that. So I have measured my, my weapon here. It is right at about, what, 24 and a half inches. So it's under 26, it's 24 and a half inches. I love it. Uh, it's, it's compact as I want it. I've actually put it in a book bag to take it to the range one time. And if I separate the upper and the lower, it fits in there perfectly. So if that time came where I wanted to put it in a bag, I could. Or I could just buy one of those Vertex book bags and put it in there just like this. Quick plug for them. I think they have some great products that have not broken down and um, purchased any yet. But I've seen a lot of raving reviews on Vertex book bags and stuff. But maybe I'll look into it in the future. But this is my AR, AR pistol. Arrow Precision. Chamber in the 556. Seven and a half inch barrel. Nice 50-50 muzzle can. Romeo 5 uh, red dot. I love it to death. Any questions, concerns, let me know in the comments. If you have any type of uh, specific build, let me know as well. I like to look it up and I like to see it because I'm curious and I love what other people have. And um, that's all I got. Randy Savage 50 checking out here. Y'all have a good evening.